I'm Julia Brown, and I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I'm Julia Brown, and I'm an introvert. I have nothing to say. I'm Julia, I'm Brown, Julia Brown, and I'm, and an, I'm an introvert. I'm unassertive. I'm shy. I'm Julia Brown. I'm Julia Brown. I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I'm anti-social. I have nothing to say. I'm Julia Brown. I'm Julia. I'm Julia Brown. And I'm an introvert. I'm nothing to say. I'm awkward. I'm unassertive. I'm Julia Brown. I'm Julia Brown. I'm an introvert. And I'm an unassertive. I'm anti-social. I'm Julia Brown, and I'm an introvert. And I love meeting new people. But at the end of the day, I need my time to process, to parse out what I've learned and why it's important. All my life, people have pushed me to be somebody who I'm not. But I know that a smile from you is all the warmth and recognition that I need. In order to have this discussion today, I'd like you to remember that introversion and extroversion are on a scale. We are all somewhere in between. 45% of today's C-suite executives and over half the population identify as introverts. But no one is 100% introverted or extroverted. The word introvert literally means to turn inward. And that's exactly what introverts do. In order to process the day's events, introverts turn to the inner world of thought and feeling. Rather than living in the moment, Introverts focus on the meaning of events and how that fits into the bigger picture. An introvert gains their energy through reflection. I'm Julia Brown, and I'm an introvert, and this is my story of breaking through the noise. Imagine, you've just walked off a plane and into a foreign country. It seems similar, but everything is slightly different. The street signs, the smells of fried food and cigarettes, the sounds of traffic from the main thoroughway or children playing in a nearby schoolyard, even the way the air feels sticky on your skin. Being an introvert is like walking into a foreign country every day where, you, where all of your senses are heightened as you try to find your balance. It's a rush and the feeling of exhilaration and adventure bubble up inside of you. It's a puzzle that you're struggling to figure out but all of the pieces are constantly moving and changing. Over time, you learn how it works, how it fits together, and what to expect. I feel that way every time I walk into a room full of new people or have to deal with a new situation. But that's also how I survived walking off a plane into Buenos Aires, Argentina, and apprenticing myself to a chocolatier. <laughs> Introverts have the amazing ability to make their friends, acquaintances, and colleagues feel heard. Because they are listening really closely to what you have to say. They're trying to figure out what makes you you and why you do the things that you do. There's a reason nerdy, awkward Mark Zuckerberg invented the social network. It's because he knew what you were going to do before you did it yourself. <laughs> I had studied Spanish in college, but nothing had prepared me for the rapid fire Spanish needed to work in an Argentine kitchen. Being an introvert surprisingly worked in my favor. By, by closely watching and working with the people around me, I was able to learn much more quickly how things should be done, how not to burn the chocolate, how long to let the ganache set for, and the delicate flick of the wrist needed to make a design just so on the top of a truffle. Even in a fast-paced, loud kitchen where pans are clattering, the radio is blaring mana, and people are shouting from one end of the kitchen to the other, you, as an introvert, can connect with people on a deep and personal level and break through the noise. After I was a chocolatier, I became a hedge fund analyst. <laughs> it's a little bit of a career non sequitur, I know, but it's almost the perfect job for an introvert. You spend all day reading the news, industry reports, interviewing experts and mom and pop business owners. And then at the end of the day, you step back and you distill that information into investable ideas. But the world of investing is a world of noise. The phones are constantly raining. CNBC is blasting behind you and you feel as though you're living in a perpetual earthquake where the next piece of news could shatter the foundations of your investment theses, your ideas. The only way to survive in this world 
is to have conviction, a belief so strong it's interwoven with your personality. Introverts are naturally analytical. By taking the time to watch, listen, and process events, they can have contrarian, unconventional, or, unconventional or even ahead of the curve ideas. But these same analytical tendencies force you to recognize just how fragile your ideas are. You spend so much time thinking about your ideas that their flaws and cracks are obvious to you and erode your conviction. As an introvert, you have to fight this tendency to turn inward, to write off your ideas because of their imperfections. As an introvert, you have to make yourself vulnerable. These ideas, the ones that are integral to who we are, are the ones that we need to share with the world. The returns are worth the risks. Warren Buffett was a 25-year-old no-name kid who couldn't get a job, so he started his own investment firm. He bought companies where nobody else saw value. Today, he's the greatest investor of our time. Mr. Buffett is a self-described introvert. I started working at a hedge fund as a 25-year-old no-name kid as a part-time office manager. Within three years, I was a full-time analyst, and two of the ideas I had worked on were our two biggest returns in the fund. I'm not saying I'm the next Warren Buffett, <laughs> but I do know that having conviction means knowing where the limits of your belief system are. I know which events can render my ideas useless, and I can quantify that downside for you. But by knowing how large that downside is, I also know by how much the returns outweigh that risk. Having conviction means knowing that you might fail, but how much better it will be if you succeed. Know your ideas. Be unconventional. Break through the noise. At this point, you're probably saying to yourself, I've heard all of this before. I know it. But how do I actually get anyone to notice? How do I speak up? It is impossible to break through the noise without speaking up. Believe me, I've tried every way. And it's something I still struggle with today, which is why I'm here on a stage in a room full of people. <laughs> Every day, I struggle to break through the noise of my own self-doubt. Luckily, I've had my own champions, my family, friends, and mentors, who were able to break through my quiet and protected facade and find something that they, too, believed in. These people have paved the way for me to make some seemingly crazy choices that turned out to be the best decisions of my life. These people pull me out of my own protective cone of silence and give me the strength to keep trying when everything seems impossible. Find your champions. They will give you the power to break through the noise. In a world that is constantly asking you to speak up, to make yourself vulnerable, to make yourself heard. Sometimes breaking through the noise seems hard, but it is the perfect opportunity to rise to the occasion and challenge yourself. Taking this risk becomes so much easier if you value yourself. Know your skills. You have the incredible ability to make people feel heard in a world where that's all anyone around you is asking for. And you have the ability to come up with creative, outside-of-the-box ideas that can shatter the limits of the world that we live in. Know yourself. Challenge yourself. Trust yourself. Break through the noise. Thank you.